What is up, YouTube? How's everybody out there doing today? Um, yeah, we got uh, some stuff going on here at the shop, right, Mitchell? There's always shit going on here. <laughs> what you doing, buddy? Everything. <laughs> Do you love it? Oh. You, want it you want me to touch it for you? Everybody seems to want you on my bike. You don't ride a Harley, so. What if I rode a Harley? You'd be on the back of my bike, though, right? You won't ride a Harley. But what if I did? You won't. But what if I did? There is no what if. But what if I did? Okay, so you guys are probably wondering why there is literally a Chevy Camaro SS uh, uh, body sitting here, nice convertible, and there is a Firebird. This is not. This is not my Trans Am, just so you guys know, not my formula. My formula is sitting over there. Everything's okay. This is another customer's car. We're going to talk about this really, really quick. Mitch loves these cars, don't you, Mitch? Don't you? So basically what's going down here is this Firebird was a V6. That SS was a V8. The customer wanted this engine and driveline and suspension out of this car and put into this car. And then possibly the drive line out of this car, the V6, which is over here actually. Uh, Supercharger. It's actually a, a power, I think it's a Powerdyne supercharger kit on a V6. Uh, possibly might be going in the SS. I don't know why he would want to do that, but that might be the case. We haven't really discussed uh, the future plans for the SS yet. But if uh, he doesn't do this, I think he is offering to sell this engine, this V6 engine with the supercharger or without the supercharger, whatever the case may be. So here it is sitting. Um, I guess if somebody might be interested in it, you can email me at diabloformula at hotmail.com or comment below, something of that nature. I don't know what he's planning on doing with it, but I am putting it out there just in case he does decide to get rid of it. So Mitch has been doing this, and Mitch, when did you start this job? Monday. Monday. So Monday, Mitch started tearing the SS apart and he got the SS all torn down. And we're talking everything. We're not just talking a simple little engine swap. Obviously, the rear end's out of the V6. We swapped over everything. Well, Mitch swapped over everything, including the gas tank as well. The gas tank's been swapped over. The rear, the suspension's been swapped over. The exhaust, the fuel line. Hell, the fuel line and brake lines have all been swapped over from the V8 to the V6. Uh, even, even as much as the ABS block has been swapped over as well. So... A lot of, lot of shit being done. And that was with Mitch doing, taking this all apart. As you guys can see, it's, it's fucking all apart. Like, I mean, it is an empty shell of a car. Taking that one all apart and then putting all that shit into that one right there, which is crazy. And literally, basically two days, basically two days, he got that all done. So I'm very grateful for Mitch because Mitch is the motherfucking man. Hub. Hub. <laughs> He's the man and he works extremely hard for me and I'm very grateful for that. It gives me time to do other things like order parts and call customers um, and build six speed transmissions, which is what this video is gonna be kind of about a little bit. I wanna show you guys, we have some of it together, not all of it, some of it. I wanna show you guys some little tidbits on a T56 transmission. So we have all of our parts here and we don't have a final assembly on it because there's a lot of there's shims underneath these bearings um i'll lift this up actually there's underneath that race there's a shim and basically before you do final assembly um there's shims in here there's shims in here and there's shims in the main case um, behind both these bearings or bearing races as well so what you have to do is you have to assemble everything first Put it together, there's a whole bunch of little dumb dial indicator measurements you have to do. I'm not gonna show all that stuff because it's just, it's way too time consuming and I just don't wanna go through the time of showing you dial indicated uh, bearing thrust uh, clearances and all that dumb stuff. Um, so that'll be done after the fact and then you'll just see the, the built, you know, I'll just show you basically what it looks like when you put the case back on and, and put everything back together, essence, you know, in, in, in essence after I measure everything and uh, put it all together. But what I wanna show you is these little guys here. So these are our synchronizers. We have, uh, I think this is this five six, 
That's five six synchronizer. Three four synchronizer right here. And then we have our one two synchronizer hub. So little explanation on you probably probably you're asking maybe Andy what the hell is a synchronizer hub what do they do what's their purpose well I'm going to explain to you what the purpose of a synchronizer hub is and then I'm going to show you an upgraded modification that we do with these T56 synchronizer hubs here in the shop to make them last longer which you probably already see if you know what you're looking at but uh we'll go ahead and move on here so we're going to grab one of our synchronizers. This is our synchronizer, basically. This is what it's called. Um, this is 3-4. Um, so this is fourth gear. And then uh, third gear would technically, yeah, third gear would be here. So on the shaft, third gear would be here. This would be fourth gear on, on the shaft. So the input shaft for this transmission, which you can see it's down, you know, going through the table there. I got a hold in the table for this kind of a build. Um, this, is, this would be a fourth gear uh, input shaft. So you take your synchronizer and basically your synchronizer sits on top of here, right? And what happens is when you go to shift, when uh, we'll use, uh, we'll actually use the shift fork here. This is an actual steel 3-4 shift fork uh, and it would be positioned right here basically. Uh, yeah, right there. And it sits here like this and it goes up and down when you shift from third to fourth, okay? And basically what that's doing is there's a, there's a layer of oil between your synchronizer and your actual cup here on the uh, on the input shaft itself or the fourth gear itself and this is constantly spinning and this is constantly spinning well we'll put it this way this is constantly spinning everything's constantly spinning so it's like vroom 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 all that fun stuff where's three four at three four sits on top like so but it's it's spinning so when you put your fork in it kind of looks like this basically so this all stays stationary, and imagine this spinning its ass off, but this stays stationary. So what happens is when you go to shift, this synchronizer actually, just to make it simple for you guys, and I'm not gonna do it because it will explode and I don't want it to explode, but basically this synchronizer pushes down and it interlocks these keys, if you can see right here, and interlocks these keyways with these keyways. Now, as you can see, they're not quite lined up yet. And that's the purpose of, I'll put that over here, that's the purpose of why this spins on here like so. Because basically as this is spinning, or as the as the input shaft is spinning, and this is all, you know, spinning around, these eventually at certain RPMs will line up like that, which then enables your synchronizer to come down and interlock this gear with this, uh, with this um, uh, synchronizer, which locks the synchronizer hub in place on the splines of the shaft. So then you're in fourth gear when it's when this is down. So that's pretty much a very short explanation on how a synchronizer in a transmission or a T56 or pretty much actually any transmission, any manual transmission will have synchronizers just like this or synchronizer hubs just like this and synchronizers like this and shift forks as well. This is called a shift fork. So uh, every transmission, manual transmission will have some sort of a, of a uh, setup similar to that. So what we're gonna do here today is we'll push this to the side and push this to the side. We're actually gonna use our three, four, but we're gonna upgrade what's called the keys. Now, what's in here now is just stock stamp steel keys with stock um, uh, uh, retainer rings. So what we'll do here is we'll pop these out like so. I'm gonna try to do this with one hand. It's gonna be interesting. Okay, so that that keyway is out. As you can see, that's just a stock OEM keyway. We're gonna turn it upside down. It's good to do this on a flat surface because then these keyways don't fall out of here and you'd have to go find them and shit. How many people can do this one-handed? Ow, that hurt. All right, now that one's out. So basically what we'll do is we'll take this keyway out and you see they're very weak looking. They're not strong. I don't know if you guys can focus in on that and see that. They're very weak. They will break these little tabs right here. They will break off and cause all kinds of shifting issues. So basically we'll take all them guys out and what we do, we upgrade them with these what's called billet keys. Now the other little thing that I want to show you guys that we upgrade here with these uh, T56s is 
these guys bronze fork pads basically uh factory are these little plastic ones i have a small one i don't have a big one but what the hell is that laugh for mitch these are little plastic ones they tend to break and wear out really bad now uh man i don't have a big one here at all i don't think I'm trying to see if i have one i don't um so basically what you do actually i do hold on a minute there got a big one <laughs> so basically as you can see you can actually see on this one how it is wearing away it cracks uh you can see that i mean these things are you know they work for a little bit when you start beating the crap out of them you actually see where the where the actual synchronizer as it sat in here was rubbing in that location you can see the outline of the of the synchronizer rubbing in there so we we get rid of those guys uh we throw them in the trash because they are junk basically and I'll just show you because this one already has it. We upgraded these bronze ones. Now, look how nice and easy they fit in there. That just fits in there real smooth like. No wiggle wiggle. Very taut. And they're very nice to use. And they don't wear out nowhere near as quick as these crappy plastic ones, plastic ones do. Now, these are okay for a stock rebuild. Um but they're not good for anything high performance you try to do something high performance with plastic ones you're just going to run into issues and problems and all kinds of non-fun that you don't want to run into all right we got our all of them actually even the reverse is all done we got our keys in we're good to go so i guess maybe what we can do now I don't know how long I really want to make this video, but uh, I guess I'll make this one a little bit longer of a video just because I feel like you guys are enjoying this T56 transmission build. So what we're going to do, I guess now, is we'll go ahead and assemble some of this main shaft uh, right here. We'll put this uh, put this all together and uh, assemble some gears on this sucker. Now, keep in mind, you're going to want to make sure you clean all these parts before you put them back together. And I've already done that, so don't yell at me. Now, the beauty of my beautiful table here is I have this hole where the plate was sitting. We're actually going to go ahead and we're going to put uh, this guy in the hole. And it pretty much just sits kind of like that. I'm not going to hurt nothing, so it just sits in there. So I can build this side of the shaft, put my gears on. This would be third gear. So one of the very first things that I like to do with these things is uh, we got a little bit of training fluid here. We need to put a little bit of training fluid on this guy here. Just lube it up. There we go. I'm, I'm doing this one-handed, so that's why it kind of looks weird. So I'm trying to do the best I can for you guys so you get a good example of uh, what you want to get oil, training fluid, all in them bearings, real nice and tart like. And then basically goes on there like so the next step is um we take this guy here put that guy in its place well, there we go there we go right there like so that just holds it in place there so uh, uh there we go there we go now you guys can see that bearing kind of sitting in there like so there we take our third gear right here and we slide third gear over our bearing and turn it get that oil nice and lubed up and in there that way it's nice and good yeah and as you guys can see that gear now sits right on top of that sucker very very nicely just like it should the next step is we will take our 3-4 synchronizer ring and hub well first we got to do something first we actually have to take our synchronizer put our synchronizer on top of that and we're gonna put some oil in there as well I'm making a mess making a mess there we go oil it loves oil put that on there like so and then it's time for the synchronizer to go on now when you're assembling the uh, synchronizer on these things you got to keep in mind the little nubbies under there, I don't know, you see these nubbies up top here? They have to line up with that little groove. I don't know if you guys can see that. That little groove in the synchronizer as you press that synchronizer uh, hub on. All right, we have our synchro on and my battery's starting to die, so I'm gonna make this quick. But um, as you can see, we put the snap ring in and just to give you an example of how that synchronizer works, we're gonna go ahead and uh, push this down like so. There, you can see that the synchronizer is now locked with this gear 
And when this shaft turns, you're in fourth gear right there. See how I'm moving that thing around? It ain't going nowhere. Now obviously with the synchronizer up, we can move this gear freely. And that's how a transmission engages a gear in, a, uh, in any transmission pretty much. We'll take our input shaft, stick that in there. We need the other synchronizer ring right here. Put that on there. And then our good old main shaft goes right here like so until it drops into place. That's basically what you have. We're gonna put the rest of this together, but basically the fork, as you guys can see, sits in there and then goes up and down, which then controls both your both your um, your third gear and your fourth gear uh, in this transmission. So my battery's going dead, like I was saying. So we're not gonna waste a whole bunch of time um, showing you how to put all the other gears in. It's pretty much the same step as this. You put a gear. Uh, synchronizer synchronizer hub and another gear facing the opposite direction and there's only two more that go here uh second and then first gear and then a bearing and that's it so we're gonna do that and we'll just do it right now all right guys so that's about as much as we have for you today hopefully you enjoyed the video hopefully you learned a little bit about a t56 male transmission mitch is over here fighting with a firebird still how you, how you loving it? Oh, loving it. He's not loving it. Um, all right, guys. If you did enjoy it, do me a favor. Give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Instagram, Diablo Formula Racing. Facebook is also Diablo Formula Racing. This is guys.